Today, I'm gonna see if a diesel engine will actually run underwater. Believe it or not, this is something that's been on my bucket list for a while now, and I'm just gonna jump right into it. This is a Kohler diesel engine, the same one I used for the clutch torture test and the turbo diesel go-kart. Under normal running conditions, the fins on that flywheel pump air through those cooling fins to keep the engine cool since this is air cooled. But underwater, I'm thinking that that flywheel is gonna act like a giant water pump and pump water through those fins instead of air. All right, I got the engine all cleaned up. Looks pretty good. I'm just gonna get it mounted to the table, give it a quick test run, and then it goes underwater. All right, other than a very slight oil leak there, it's ready to go underwater. I'm swapping out this turbo drain tube with a clear one. It should have never been aluminum in the first place, but if any water gets mixed in with the oil or ends up getting into the engine, we should be able to see it right here in this return tube. Overall, I think we should be good because the entire engine has O-rings and it's all sealed up just like this. The only thing that I'm worried about here, a crankcase breather right here that I believe there's a check valve built in. I'm just hoping no water gets in there, but I think I'm gonna find out really quickly if I try to start it and it's hydro locked or there's water in the oil. I know I have to seal up that breather, but I think it's good. I'm gonna try it just like this. Since I have a feeling that this flywheel is gonna pump an enormous amount of water, I'm gonna install the pool cover for the first run. If it makes it through the first run, I'm gonna take it off. The way I see it is that this cover will offer somewhat of a restriction. If there is an enormous amount of flow, once this is underwater, I wonder if the starter's still gonna work. <laughs> The engine is underwater and at first I saw a few air bubbles coming from that cover right there but it's been sitting in there about a minute or two and it's looking pretty good because I don't see any other air bubbles at all. I see a couple of small bubbles that were coming from the turbo but other than that I feel like this is pretty incredible. The whole thing looks really sealed up. I don't see any other bubbles coming from anywhere. I did not think that this was going to look that cool pretty incredible and guess what football season is finally here and i've teamed up with DraftKings sportsbook to make it even better yeah yeah i use DraftKings all the time and if you're a new customer this is a deal that you do not want to miss right now when you sign up with the promo code warped and place just a five dollar bet you'll instantly get three hundred dollars in bonus bets plus $200 off an NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Imagine locking in your picks, then sitting back with a Sunday ticket to watch it all play out. You can bet on the fact that the next great touchdown is coming. So don't wait. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and sign up using promo code WARPED. Bet $5 and score $300 in bonus bets instantly, plus $200 off an NFL Sunday ticket. Make every game count and every minute count Thanks to my partners at DraftKings Sportsbook. Let's get this thing started up for the first time. I'm really curious to see what happens. I think this is gonna work. Notice right when I'm about to start this up is there's something weird going on with the positive and negative cables going to the starter. It's making like a jellyfish. 
Well, let me get this started before it doesn't start at all. The lights are on. Uh-oh. I don't know how, but it sounds like water has gotten inside the engine. How could that be possible? Whoa, what was that? Oh my God, it just spit oil everywhere out of the intake right here. Looks like the turbo is full of oil. As we all know, oil is lighter than water. And I didn't even notice that my tube right here is completely full of water. And even the, oh, there's the oil right there, look it. There's a turbo wastegate vacuum tube. That's full of oil. Yeah, I'm gonna have to drain this thing real quick. Get all this oil out of here. Plug up that breather. Try this again. It looks like the water is dripping out and the oil is starting to come back down in that indicator tube. It's crazy because I put that in for the exact reason of monitoring whether water was getting in the crankcase and I wasn't paying attention. And then it filled up with water. Oh water coming out of there that's like two quarts of water maybe three quarts of water already well, that's about four quarts of water I don't know if I see any oil coming out of there at all there we go looks like oil to me now looks pretty clean I did see some oil fly out of the turbo, so I'm going to remove the intake pipe and see if there's any oil inside that turbo. Oh. Wow. I might have a runaway diesel. Oh man, I think the whole turbo is full of water too. What is that noise? Seems like there's a lot of water coming out of the exhaust. Oh. oh my God, it's still running. Isn't that crazy? Man, these diesels are hardcore, I'm telling you. You can't tell me that's not insane. That thing just has six quarts of water in there. If I can start it right off right now, that's spitting water out of the exhaust. Look at all that sludge coming out of the exhaust. That's wild. And I checked this engine top to bottom. I thought maybe there was something under the head here, like some kind of breather because I saw bubbles, but there's nothing there. The only thing I can think of is maybe this dipstick. Right here, check this out. I don't know if this fits in here really tight. I don't think this dipstick's the problem. This fits in here really tight. And I don't see anything under here that turned out not to be a breather but a governor adjustment screw and that's all sealed up it might be this governor linkage leaking water i'm not sure or maybe the turbo needs to be sealed i don't really see anything else that would leak water in i'm gonna have to really rip this apart and seal this up really well and in an effort to keep a consistent upload schedule I'm going to end this video here and call this part one and part two will be coming right up after this one. And let me know what you think. If anybody works on these engines, let me know what you think where water can be getting in. I don't see any reason that this engine can't run underwater. But like I said, I'm going to stop this video here, call this part one. I'll be back with part two right after this video in about a day or two.